if you have a Westie and you're wondering whether you can travel with them by plane and take them with you in the cabin, watch this video and I'm gonna tell you. So I'm gonna walk you through the whole journey from the minute you book the ticket up until landing and I'm gonna talk to you about every step, uh, things like the airline requirements, what is the, the maximum weight allowed for your Westie to be with you on the plane, what kind of paperwork you need, what are the rules, what type of dog carrier you need to buy and how to choose the best one for you and your dog how to prepare before the flight, ways in which you can keep your dog calm and anxiety-free as much as possible during the flight. And also at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a checklist of things that you need to have with you on the plane in order to make this whole journey as comfortable as, as possible. So let's dive right into it. You might notice in this video, I'm only talking about flying with your Westie in the cabin. There are two ways in which you can fly with your dog um, on the plane. You can put them in the cargo section, which is underneath the plane where the luggage goes. And that's usually for dogs bigger than the maximum weight required. And I'm gonna tell you all about that. And I'm not gonna be talking about that because I have no experience with, with flying in cargo. And um, honestly, if I had to choose, I, I'd rather not fly than, than put Sami in cargo because I, I heard some stories about it and I'm just not very comfortable with it. So the other way is obviously taking your dog with you and this is what we're gonna be talking about in this video. First thing you do when you decide to fly with your Westie is to check to see if they fit the requirements of the airline. So the most important thing is the weight. The maximum allowed weight usually varies from airline to airline, but in Europe, most airlines um, have a maximum weight of eight kilograms, which is the dog plus the carrier. Some airlines even have only six kilos, but the one that I flew with uh, allowed eight kilos, dog plus bag. So I don't know what it's like in other places. I only know in Europe because I've only flown with Sami in Europe so far. That means that if, uh, if your Westie is close to the eight kilos, like Sami is, you need to pay attention and weigh, you know, scale them, scale them. Uh, weigh them before the flight and make sure that your carrier bag will be light enough so that you won't go over the maximum weight allowed. So if your dog is eight kilos, let's say, and then your carrier bag is an, another 200 grams more, uh, then that means you're going over the limit. And I honestly, I can't tell you if you're gonna pass or not. That depends on the staff and it depends on your luck because someone can have a bad day and they can just say, sorry, you know, I'm not allowed to, to let you through with the dog. You need to put them in the cargo section. And this is what happens if your dog and the bag are heavier than the maximum weight that they allow. But you know, if you are under that, then uh, you have no problem. I'm actually gonna be flying with Sami in a few days and it's gonna be the first flight in two years and a half, I think. And he's already very close to the eight kilos. I think he's 7.7, .7, something like that. He was 7.8, but you know, he's been on a diet lately. Uh, in the past week, he received less treats than usual. And yeah, I'm hoping that everything will be okay and there'll be no problems, we'll see. Uh, the next rule when doing the check-in and the airport staff is gonna check if everything's okay, is um, your dog will need to be comfortable inside the carrier bag. They need to be able to stand, lay down and turn around with no problem. You know, some airlines don't even enforce that. So when I flew with Sami for the first time, there were no problems there. They didn't make him stand or turn around or anything like that. But um, on our fourth flight, uh, somebody actually made him stand inside the bag and uh, she said that he doesn't look comfortable. And uh, anyway, it was a whole thing. Maybe I'll make another video and talk about this. We almost didn't fly because of that because of the fact that Sami couldn't stand comfortably inside the bag. Uh, we, in the end, we did fly. We were lucky, but it was a, a bit of a struggle there. Now, you might be thinking, of course, I'm just gonna get a bigger carrier bag and make sure that my Westie can stand and uh, be comfortable inside it. But each airline has specific maximum dimensions for the carrier bag. So this is something you need to check with your airline. You you just go on the website and see 
they usually have a section of flying with your pet in the cabin and that's where they they're gonna say what the size of the bag should be and they usually specify the length the width and the height of it so for example the airline that we're flying with right now has um i think the maximum sizes allowed are 55 centimeters in length 40 in width and 23 in height so that's a challenge because sami when he stands up he's i don't know like over 30 centimeters so obviously in a in a bag that has only 23 centimeters in height he's not going to be able to stand up so what i did right now was i actually bought a bag that was slightly taller so instead of 23 i got 30 centimeters in height uh, and that means he's He's gonna be able to stand, but you know, not very comfortably. We'll see how it goes. But in my experience, no one really measures the bag. So the idea is that the bag needs to fit underneath the seat in front of you. Because throughout the whole flight, your dog must remain in the in the bag at all times. And the bag has to be underneath the seat in front of you. If you go a few centimeters over that allowed height, it's probably not gonna be a problem just because I I've never seen anyone actually get a tape measure and measure the bags now when it comes to choosing the bag you know you have two options you can get the hard shell kind of carrier you know the ones that the most common ones that are plastic and uh, I think they have a metal door or you can go with the soft shell I think it's called which is the fabric ones some airlines only allow the soft ones on the flight. So it, again, it depends from airline to airline. You need to check with your airline. But uh, for example, the one that we're flying with, which is Aegean, only allows soft bags. The one that we chose initially when we flew with Sami for the first time was uh, a really tiny one, really. He was, I think, seven or eight months old. And here's the bag. It's... Uh, it's really tiny and what I love about it is that it's light and I love that it's it has a lot of zippers so it's able to open on all sides you can open the top and he can just get his head out and sit comfortably you can um, you can open the laterals and it actually expands by 20 more centimeters on each side so that's huge you know um, and that was a pleasure to fly with because I was able to actually keep him in between my feet during the flight. So during takeoff and landing, you need to keep the, the bag underneath the seat in front of you. That's something that they, they care about a lot and they come and check. And, uh, you know, it's not only your, your dog bag, it's also if you have a backpack or anything like that, it needs to be underneath the seat during the uh, take off and landing. But during the actual flight, you know, when the seat belt sign is off, you can pull it out a little bit. And what I did was I just placed it at my feet. I spread my legs a little bit. I wasn't very comfortable, but uh, I could expand it this way and Sami could just lay down and feel like a king, basically. He was super comfortable. So if you can get a bag like this one, um, I recommend it. It's really good, it's really comfortable, and your dog will be really relaxed in it. The bag that we got now, for example, because this one is obviously too small for him now, um, the bag that we have now doesn't expand. We didn't find a larger one like, like that. But uh, what's good about it is it, you know, he fits better and it's very airy. It has all this mesh, so, the air circulates really well and you can also open the top and he can uh, just stay comfortably inside it. You know, other things that you should be looking at when choosing uh, the carrier bag is you need to make sure it's comfortable on your shoulder. So it should have that kind of padding thing to protect your shoulder because uh, Westies aren't really light. Eight kilos isn't nothing. So you're gonna feel it. But at the same time, you know, you're not gonna be carrying your dog uh, for a long time because uh, in the airport, you can just walk with your dog on leash. So you don't need to keep them in the carrier bag. You can just get a leash and your Westie can walk freely 
inside the airport. You know, it's only during check-in that he needs to be in the bag and when boarding the plane and on the plane, obviously. So otherwise, you know, in the airport, you don't have to worry about that. If you have a transfer flight and you have a layover somewhere and you want to sit in the airport lounge, then depending on the airport, each has its own rules, but usually you need to keep the dog inside the carrier bag in the lounge area. Otherwise, you know, no need to worry. Yeah, so when it comes to choosing the carrier bag, these are the things that you should keep in mind. You need to really know the, the maximum size, check with your airline. If you don't find that information on the website, although usually they do write that down, uh, you can always just call them and uh, talk to them and I'm sure that they'll be happy to help. Yeah, these are pretty much the things you, you need to take into consideration. The dimensions of the bag, the type of bag, you just need to check if they allow hard plastic carriers on the plane or you need a soft one. But anyway, I recommend you to get a soft one anyway because one, it's lighter. It's gonna matter a lot when they weigh your dog. And second, because it has all kinds of zippers and you can just open it up and uh, it's more comfortable that way. So I guess I should also mention that on the plane, on the flight, your dog must be in the carrier bag, but you can always just open up the zippers and let them just take their head out, lay down, so nobody's gonna say anything about that. Moving on to the next step, paperwork. So when it comes to the paperwork you need to fly with your Westie, you're gonna need the following. If it's a domestic flight, then you're gonna need your dog's health book, which is this one. This is what Sammy's look like, looks like. Uh, and this is where all the vaccines are and they must be up to date. All the dewarmings, uh, stuff like that. You can always check that with your vet. If it's an international flight, you're gonna need a passport for your dog. So this is Sammy's passport. And you, you get this at the vet. You just go to your vet and they will uh, they will issue a passport for your dog. So what you need to make sure is that all the vaccines here are up to date. You know, depending on the country you're flying to, usually the, the mandatory vaccines are the anti-rabies, the parvovirus, hepatitis, and leptospirosis. Then again, it's always best to check that with your airline. Just pick up the phone, call them, and make sure that, um, that you have everything you need and ask them to just walk you through all the paperwork you need to fly. But usually it's uh, either the health book if it's a domestic flight or the passport if it's an international flight. Your dog must have the microchip, um, so that's uh, mandatory. But I guess every dog has a microchip nowadays. And you know, in Europe, this is pretty much everything you need in terms of paperwork. Um, if you are in the United States, um, I guess you also need a valid health certificate that your veterinarian should uh, provide and it has a validity of 30 days, something like that. But again, check with your airline. It's best to talk to them if you have any doubts or any questions, you know, just to be safe. How to prepare before the flight? So what are some things that you need to do before the flight in order to make sure that everything runs smooth? So the first thing I recommend you do one or two weeks before the flight, if you can, is get your Westie comfortable with the carrier bag. Just do some light training with them every day for three minutes, five minutes, it doesn't have to be long. Just, you know, get them to go inside the carrier on their own and reward them. Get them to spend maybe five minutes, reward them. Get them to turn around inside it, reward them and so on, you get the point. It's always good to do that because this way the, the carrier will be a familiar environment for your Westie when time comes to, to go on the flight. So this way you're helping your Westie to feel less stressed out, you know, less anxious about being inside uh, the bag. Um, because your Westie is going to be spending quite a lot of time inside the carrier bag, it's also a good idea maybe to have them take their naps during the day when you're at home inside the bag and, you know, get them as comfortable as possible uh, right before the flight. That's going to help a lot. Now, on to the next topic. How to help your Westie stay calm and anxiety-free during the flight. 
There are a few things that you can do to make sure you reduce your dog's anxiety as much as possible. One of them is to book a night flight. If you have that option, it's an amazing thing to book a night flight because this way, you know, your dog's already gonna be sleepy and hopefully they're gonna sleep throughout the whole flight, like my experience was with Sami. And also they're not gonna need potty breaks as often and there won't be any need to, to feed them because you're gonna give them dinner right before you leave home. Of course, a night flight is always more tiring for you because, you know, for me, I mean, I hate to fly at night. I, I feel super tired the, the following day, uh, so it's not easy, but it's better for your Westie. This way, you know, they'll be hopefully low energy and uh, it's already overlapping on their sleep pattern. So that's the first thing that I recommend you do to keep your Westie more calm. Now, another thing that you can and you should actually do before the flight is tire them out as much as possible. If you do book a night flight, then you're gonna have the whole day to tire them out, take them on long walks, play with them, chase them around, you know, just get them to use all that energy and hopefully they're gonna be tired when the nighttime comes and you have to fly. So that's an important step in the preparation before the flight. Just everything you can do really to, to exhaust your Westie is a good idea. For example, let's say maybe you're having a really busy day and you just don't have all day to take your Westie on a long walk and play with them and all of that. You can always uh, do some things that require minimum effort on your part, but that will tire your Westie out. For example, food puzzles. That's a good solution because any kind of game that involves them to sniff and to, to look for food is great mental stimulation and physical as well. So um, if you have any food puzzles at home, you can use that and uh, get your Westie to spend all that mental energy doing something that they actually enjoy. Um, if you don't have any food puzzles and you don't know what to do, here's a game that I play with Sami a lot. I just hide treats around the room or the house and uh, he just spends like 10-15 minutes looking for them. It's a treasure hunt, it's fun, he loves it and um, again it's just great mental exercise and this is the kind of exercise that tires a dog out really fast. So that's a great solution for something to do before the flight. Now when you're at the airport after you do the check-in and they weigh your dog and they give you the ticket and everything, you can also take your dog for a walk and a potty break there and make sure that they do their business and that they spend a little more energy there. So what other things you can do to make your Westie a little bit more comfortable with the whole experience? Bring their favorite toy with you. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of waiting around time in the airport, waiting to board the plane and all of that. So why not use that time to make your Westie feel a little bit more comfortable with the whole environment, you know? That's something you can also use on the plane. Uh, you can always just get the toy out and play with them a little bit on the flight. Um, another thing you can do to keep them more comfortable is to bring a blanket that they usually sleep in or, you know, a fluffy pillow or something like that and just put them, put it inside the carrier bag. So this way they will have the smell of home with them and they're going to feel more comfortable for sure. You can always bring snacks with you and this is actually something that I'm going to talk about at the end of the video when I'm gonna give you the checklist of things that you should have with you on the plane. And snacks is one of them for two reasons. One, because it helps your Westie be more comfortable, it reinforces good behavior, you know, you can use that treat to tell your, your Westie to lay down inside the crate, inside the carrier bag and then you just reward them with a treat. Don't give them the treat if they're being anxious and if they're acting nervous, because then you'll be reinforcing the anxious behavior, basically. This is actually a mistake that many uh, Westie parents do, is if their dog barks and shows signs of anxiety, they immediately give a treat to distract them. This is a mistake because what your dog understands from that is that, oh, when I act anxious and I bark and I, I whine and all of that, I'm getting a treat. So it must be good that I'm doing that, you know, I'm going to do it again. So yeah, 
make sure you you use the treats to reinforce good behavior you know like ask them to sit give them the treat ask them to lay down inside the bag give them the treat and so on the second thing why bringing snacks on a plane is so important is because of ear pressure when you fly the air pressure changes and your ears hurt so what we do usually to relieve the ear pressure is we just yawn or we swallow and this way our ears pop a little bit and it releases the the pressure building up inside now your westie doesn't know how to do that so it's possibly painful for them when they fly because of that ear pressure building up so what you can do to help with that is to give them something to chew on uh it can be snacks you know it can be uh their food it can be uh, a dental treat you know those things that they chew on and they they eat even a chew toy if your westy enjoys that sami doesn't uh, doesn't like chew toys at all but if your westy loves chewing on rubber things or something like that just bring that on the plane and after take off uh you can just give that to them and it will definitely help with ear pressure and also with their anxiety now if your westy is naturally very anxious and very uncomfortable in new situations uh then probably all these things that you're going to do won't help so much and your westie will still be uh, going crazy so if you know that your westie is very anxious and you need to fly with them anyway then you can check in with your vet and they can give you a relaxing supplement this is actually something that my vet offered for sami and i didn't take it because i know uh sami tends to remain pretty calm in situations like this and i think training has helped a lot with that but maybe i'm just really lucky and he's just a calm dog i don't know so the point is we didn't need any kind of relaxing supplement but i think it's something pretty common that happens and if you can help your dog feel more comfortable and uh avoid having to deal with a barking westy on a plane for 4 hours uh then maybe it's something you can look into and talk to your vet and ask them about it and see if if it's a solution for you So moving on to the next thing that I want to talk to you about which is the bathroom situation. Uh but before that, if you've been enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. We're going to be posting more videos like this in the future. Yeah? So, uh when it comes to potty breaks, what are the things that you can do? If you've booked a night flight, then the advantage of that <laughs> Okay, Sami is making a lot of noise right now. So if you've booked a night flight then the advantage of that is that your wasi won't need to use the bathroom right because during the night they don't really they don't really go for a potty break so in that case you you don't have to worry about that however um right before the flight what what you can do is take your dog for a walk and get them to make their business right before boarding the plane Now, some airports have a dog designated area inside, so um you're able to just take your Westy there and it's inside the airport and uh you know, I heard it's uh, great. <laughs> I've never been because the the airports that I've been in didn't have that kind of area. If that's the case with you as well, uh here's what I did. So, after checking in, you still have about an hour left before you have to go through security. So, what I did was I just went out of the airport. Um there was a green space right there in front, and I just walked Sami there and uh he did his business, you know, number 1, multiple number 1s, number 2. So, I didn't have to worry about that anymore. And also, it was really helpful because I could chase him around. I had that extensible 5 meter leash. So I just chased him around. He did his uh, evening zoomies and uh he got a little bit more tired after that. So that's one thing that you can do right before the flight, before going through security, just take your dog out around the airport and uh you know, get them to to do their business. Now, if you have a really long flight, obviously that's not going to be enough and probably your dog's going to need to go at some point. What we did when we flew with Sami was we brought pee pads with us. you know those uh i think they're called p training pads p mats or something like that anyway so we brought like two or three of them with us and 
we because our flight was pretty long I think it was like a 10 hour experience overall we had one flight that was four hour long then a transfer flight of another hour and the layover in between was about four hours so it was a pretty long day and uh, Sami was still a puppy so I was worried that he might need to go so everywhere we would stop in the airport like in a waiting area or in a cafe or something like that I would just lay down a pee pad on the floor and tell him to go do his business there uh, of course he never did so he he just I guess he didn't feel comfortable uh, peeing in public with so many people around or maybe it was because we were indoors and he doesn't usually pee indoors. So I don't know what it was. Uh, the fact is we laid down pee pads in the whole airport, like <laughs> at the gate, during the layover, everywhere. And yeah, it's a good backup to have. It's always good to have uh, to have a few pee pads with you, especially if you're traveling with a puppy or with a senior dog and you know that they can't hold it in for long, then that's a great solution. Another thing you can do if your dog has performance anxiety and you know that they don't feel comfortable to pee with people around, you can just take them to the public restroom in the airport and just lay down a pee pad there and hopefully they're gonna they're gonna use it now during the actual flight your dog is allowed to go with you to the bathroom if it's a long flight if you assume that maybe your dog needs to go you can always just take the carrier bag with you take a pee pad go into the bathroom and just lay down the pee pad and uh hopefully they're they're gonna do their business and this is something that you can do on long flights it's allowed it's perfectly okay and even if your dog doesn't need to go it's actually a good idea because you can take your Westie out of the bag and just get them to stretch their legs a little bit because on the plane you're not allowed to do that depends on the airline depends on the staff sometimes the staff is really nice and if the plane is not too full too crowded maybe they'll allow you to get your Westie out and put them on your lap or something like that. That wasn't the case when, when I flew with Sami. You know, I, I couldn't take him out of the bag at all. Yeah, so when it comes to the potty uh, situation, that's pretty much what you can do. These are the options you have. Of course, if it's a really long flight and you want to be comfortable, you can always just put a pee pad inside the, the carrier. So this way, if they really need to go they can just go on that and you can always just take it out and throw it away i guess there would also be the option of dog diapers i don't know if your dog is a puppy or senior or um, they have any problems with that and you can just put a dog diaper on them and um, i guess that's something you can do i've never done it but you know it's an idea it's something that you can try now moving on to the topic of food how do you feed your westie when you're flying with them So I'm going to say this again, if you've booked a night flight, then it's great because you don't have to worry about feeding, right? Uh, You fed your Westie right before the flight and you're going to give them their breakfast once you get to the destination. Um, However, if you're flying during the day and you want to respect your dog's meal times, then that's totally fine. You can do that. What you do is you bring your dog's food with you um, in a Ziploc bag. For example, this is my solution and it's worked out fine for me. Uh, You just bring a Ziploc bag with their kibble and it's great if you have um, a collapsible bowl, just like this one. Um, You know, it's, it's really practical because it's light, it collapses, so it's flat. You can uh, squeeze it in anywhere in, in your purse or you can just hang it on your backpack, which is what we did. This is pretty much how you do the, the meal on the road. Um, I have a lot of experience with that because we travel with Sami a lot and this comes in handy when, you, when we travel by car or uh, by plane or even by boat, you know. I just have this bowl with me really handy and I put the food in there and there you go. So when it comes to my experience with the food on the plane, I just, I fed Sami before we left home and I took with me his food and the bowl. And once we landed, I just put it, uh, put his food in the bowl on the floor uh, in the airport while we were waiting for our luggage. 
and he just had his breakfast there, um, no problem. If you want to feed your dog during the flight, you can also do that. You just place the bowl inside their carrier and there you go. Your dog can eat and uh, have his privacy. Of course, if you don't have a bowl like this one, you can just bring any kind of travel bowl. You can find a lot of uh, travel bowls on Amazon. Uh, they're usually made of silicone and materials like, like that because it's really practical, it's easy to clean, it's light and doesn't uh, occupy so much space. Now on to the list of things that you need to bring with you when you fly with your Westie. First of all, your dog's papers. That is passports, health book, um, if you need any kind of additional health certificate, uh, make sure it's it's on your list. Make sure you don't forget that. It's really important. Dog tag. Uh, it's this is something you probably already do. Your dog either has a collar or their harness, and they have a, a dog ID on. Um, it, you know, in case you don't, this is something that I recommend to always have on your dog, especially when you're going in crowded places such as the airport or on vacation, wherever you're going, it's always good to make sure that your dog has the ID on them. And also if this is a tip that has nothing to do with flying really, but if you're going in another country, make sure that the contact on, on your dog's tag includes the prefix of the phone number. So if you're flying, let's say from Portugal to Greece, I'm giving this example because we're gonna be flying uh, to Greece soon, then I would need to have the prefix of my phone number written on the dog tag. Because if God forbid he gets away, he gets lost, that phone number is not really gonna help in any way unless you have the country, your country's prefix on there. Um, it goes without saying that you're gonna need your dog's leash on hand uh, because you're gonna be walking them through the airport and uh, your dog's not gonna be inside the carrier uh, while you walk through the airport. They're gonna be on leash. I recommend you don't get an extensible one simply because you're gonna be walking among a crowd of people and you don't wanna have to worry about your dog getting away and tripping someone. A short leash is the best way to go when you're walking through the airport. It's also easier to tie to the chair when you're waiting to board the plane. Poop bags is something that probably any dog owner has, like one in each pocket. I know I do. Every jacket, every pair of jeans has some poop bag forgotten somewhere. So it would be pretty easy to remember, but I'm still gonna put it on the list so that you can check it off. Water travel bottle. This is something that if you don't have, I recommend you get one. You know, it's a lifesaver because your dog's gonna need to hydrate throughout the whole flight and in the airport and it's hard to give them water from your own bottle. So having a travel bottle is always advised. You can find them on Amazon. There are all kinds of uh, models there. Um, here's the one that we have and I recommend it. It's a little bit heavier than the other ones but it's really good because you can save the water. So it has this button on there where the water that your dog didn't drink, you can just put it back in the bottle. So this way you don't have to throw it out. You don't have to always, you know, have to get water. So um, yeah, this is uh, pretty important to have with you on the flight. The next thing would be snacks. Uh, this is great because it helps your Westie when they're bored. It helps you keep them a little bit more under control just by rewarding them. And it's also good, like I mentioned before, when you're on the flight, the chewing helps relieve the air pressure. So that's always something good to have with you. You can also have um, a chew toy for that matter. You can just get both, I guess. Your Westie's favorite toy. Um, it's also something you should pack and have with you and hopefully it's something small that doesn't occupy a lot of space um, but it's you know it's good for them to have something to play with. Pee pads. As I said earlier it's never um, a bad idea to bring a few pee pads. You might not even use them uh, or your dog might not even use them but if they need to go and maybe you can't take them to the bathroom, maybe, I don't know, the person next to you is asleep and you don't want to wake them up, or maybe it's inconvenient, it's always good to have uh, some pee pads with you and make sure that your dog is not gonna pee inside the carrier bag. 
and of course food. Whether you're gonna be feeding your dog on the plane or in the airport, unless it's a really short flight and you're sure that you're not gonna need um, to feed them at all. Uh, but if it's a longer flight, then I recommend you get a Ziploc bag and just put your dog's meal inside there and get, get a bowl, a collapsible travel bowl, something like that and just have that ready because you never know the plane might have a delay and it's always good to just have a, a spare meal ready you don't want your dog to be hungry because we all know how westies get when they're hungry <laughs> Now, that's about everything that you should be packing. If your dog is on any kind of medication, any kind of treatment, then don't forget to pack that. You know, it's up to you if you're gonna pack that on the plane or just put it in your travel bag. But this is something that you, ha you should have in mind. And yeah, and patience, I guess, would be the last thing on the list. Just a lot of patience and uh, just, you know, if you've never flown with your Westie before, don't be freaked out, don't be stressed. Um, the calmer you are, the calmer your Westie is gonna be because they feel, they get a sense of what we're feeling. So don't stress out too much, everything's gonna be fine. So if you've been watching this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If there's anything that I haven't mentioned and you're curious about, please let me know in comments. I might do a future video um, if you have a lot of questions. And yeah, don't, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. I'm gonna be posting more videos like this in the future. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.